a gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and Protector of Mexico. Back with you all once again for episode number 150 of Emperor Norton's Fantastic History Vlog. Today is October 7, 2020. It is our 205th day under COVID-19. Episode 150. Hard to believe that when we started doing this back in March, that we would still be speaking to you 150 episodes later. This started off with a rant about the lack of response to the pandemic. And, well, we're pretty much in the same place now, except back then only a handful of people had died. Now we have recorded over 210 thousand deaths. And that's a real sad state of affairs, isn't it? So we're going to start encouraging you, encouraging you now, if we could learn to speak English, to vote in the election that's coming up in a month, less than a month now. It's very important. This is probably the most important election in this U.S. history, if not the world. Your vote makes a difference. Don't forget the last election was decided by just about 77,000 voters spread across three states. So don't think your vote doesn't count. Do anything you can to vote. The world depends upon it. Some programming notes as well. We are not doing a vlog this Friday, so tomorrow will be the last until next Tuesday, except our special weekend edition with our guest superstar, the Countess Lola Montez of Lansfeld. And that's where we're going to be uh, showing our new technology, our green screen technology. So you'll see that on Saturday. In addition, we will be taking some time off toward the end of the month, about a week probably. And when we return, this is going to be a slightly different vlog. It'll be more like the Tuesday one where we do a number of days in review. So it's going to be a weekly vlog, usually probably on Wednesdays is what we are thinking. We will continue with the Countess's episodes on Saturdays. So you'll get two vlogs per week. Each one will be more in depth. Uh, of course, the Countess's is always in depth, but ours is going to have a story more in depth as well as the almanac of this date in history. So stay tuned for that. We also are available now as a podcast on Spotify and other platforms will be available soon. Just look for Emperor Norton's Fantastic History Podcast. And for those of you listening, we appreciate it. Uh, we learned the technology this morning, partially thanks to Grand Duchess Judy Leff. Thank you for the advice. And we got an episode uploaded, and we just got a notification that it is available on Spotify. So if you want to listen to us mobily, check it out. But of course, you won't see our happy, smiling face on those episodes. But it does give us a larger audience. Well, enough of that. Let's move on, starting with our national days. We've got some odd ones today. It's National Frappe Day. You know, whenever I hear that term, I always think of that episode of the Mary Tyler Moore Show where Ted Baxter ordered a creme de menthe frappe and they tried to give it to Mary Tyler Moore and she just pointed to Ted Knight, Ted Baxter rather, and uh, said it was for him. So check it out if you've never seen it. It is bathtub day, kind of self-explanatory. I think a nice hot bath might be good. Team Margo Stem Cell and Bone Marrow Awareness Day. We weren't able to find any explanation on this, except that it is a day uh, for, to raise awareness about donating bone marrow. So if, you, if that's something that you're inclined to do, we encourage you to do it. Random Acts of Poetry Day. We'll learn why in a moment, I would think, at least. There was no explanation as to why this day was declared that, but we think it's because of our San Francisco story today. And National Coffee with a Cop Day. Only if they throw in a donut. Moving on to Florida Man. Uh, we have two today because we couldn't decide which one was better, would be the proper term. Not sure. Worse? More entertaining? We'll see. First one. 
Florida man arrested for allegedly breaking into a house and trying on baby clothes while holding a woman hostage. That's a good one. Here's another one. Florida man accused of pouring beer in Gator's mouth while enticing reptile to bite his arm. Okay. I didn't know they had clampers in Florida. Well, let's move on to our San Francisco story for today. And as we so often do, we rely on John Ralston's wonderful book, This Date in San Francisco, because on October 7, 1955, that Allen Ginsberg reads his poem, Howl, for the first time in public. At the Sixth Gallery, named for six East Bay artists whose works, along with those of San Francisco Art Institute students, were often exhibited there, 3119 Fillmore Street, a poetry reading was held. Six poets, including 29-year-old Allen Ginsberg, read. The audience of about 75 included 33-year-old Jack Kerouac, then writing a novel tentatively called Beat, The Beat Generation, which would be published as On the Road. Lawrence Ferlinghetti, founder of City Lights Bookstore and a beginning publisher, and Ruth Witt Damont, founder of the Poetry Center at San Francisco State College. The poets and audience were a geographical cross-section. Kerouac was French-Canadian, born in Massachusetts. Ginsburg was from Brooklyn. Four other poets were Easterners, as was Ferlin Getty. During the Eisenhower era of conformity and anti-communist paranoia that infected the rest of the United States, San Francisco was its same old rebellious non-conformist self. That's why we like it here. The mad city that Kipling had described in the 19th century still attracted perfectly insane people. To quote Kipling again, raging against corporations, racism, McCarthyism, and homogenized white bread American entertainment and supporting civil rights, civil liberties, and nonconformists like themselves. Allen Ginsberg was the son of poet Lewis Ginsberg and had attended Columbia University. There he ran afoul of Lionel Trilling, who, while recognizing Ginsberg's talent, generally disliked his poetry. Ginsberg had worked at odd jobs, including marketing and advertising, which served him well, both in literature and self-promotion. He broke with academic tradition in poetry, drawing on the tradition of Walt Whitman in his use of vernacular language and imagery. At the Sixth Gallery event, the, and the Sixth Gallery event was well publicized, with notices mailed to poetry lovers in and around San Francisco. Admission was free, with a suggested donation for wine. Master of Ceremonies was poet Ken Rex, Kenneth Rexroth, who was hard put to maintain order. Jug red wine was passed around and drunk copiously by both audience and readers. Audience members did not quietly imbibe either poetry or wine, but stomped approval and cheered as Kerouac cheered, go, go, when it was Ginsburg's turn, he was pretty drunk. But he concentrated, riveting the audience with the still unfinished howl. Some critics dismissed Ginsburg and beat literature generally as self-indulgent and obscene. But there was no turning back. The Sixth Gallery reading was a breakthrough. Lawrence Ferlinghetti telegrammed Ginsburg, quote, I greet you at the beginning of a great career. When do I get the manuscript? manuscript unquote. The New York Times dispatched lecturer, lecturer, <clears throat> dispatched lecturer, author, and critic Richard Eberhardt to San Francisco to report on what Eberhardt would term, quote, the liveliest spot in the country in poetry today. And the rest is history. Let's move on to our other history for, day, for today. Because it was in 1542 that explorer Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo discovers Catalina Island off the coast of California. You know, all he had to do was look west and say, oh, there it is. 1806, carbon paper is patented in London by inventor Ralph Wedgwood. Does anybody use carbon paper anymore now that we have scanners and do everything electronically? I don't know. 1919, KLM, not the three transit lines in San Francisco, no. Royal Dutch Airlines is established and is the oldest existing airline to this day. 1938, Nazi Germany requires all Jewish passports to be stamped with the letter J. 1959, the far side of the moon is seen for the first time, courtesy of USSR's Lunar 3 space probe. 
1965, 50 mile per hour gust helps Robert Matera ace a 447 yard 10th hole at Miracle Hills, Omaha, Nebraska to score the world's longest straight hole in one. 1968, the Motion Picture Association of America adopts the film rating system. This vlog and podcast is rated PG. 1993, the Nobel Prize for Literature is awarded to American writer Toni Morrison. 1996, Rupert Murdoch launches Fox News with Roger Ailes as CEO. Happy birthday, Fox News. For those of you on the podcast, I just made a mean face. 1998, Matthew Shepard, a gay student at the University of Wyoming, is found tied to a fence after being savagely beaten by two young adults in Laramie, Wyoming. He would die on October 12th. Two thousand one, the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan starts with air assault and covert operations on the ground. Nineteen years later, it is America's longest war with two thousand two hundred and nineteen deaths and twenty thousand ninety three wounded. Moving on to our births today, eighteen seventy nine, Leon Trotsky. The Russian revolutionary leader and writer, my favorite communist, been to his home in the Coyoacan section of Mexico City, right near Frida Kahlo's house. Of course, she had an affair with him, and uh, he lived with uh, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera for a time before he got his own place. 1885, Niels Bohr, the Danish physicist who expanded quantum physics. He won the Nobel Prize in 1922 for that. 1900, Heinrich Hill Himmler, not German Nazi and head of the Gestapo. 1905, Andy Devine, real name Jeremiah Schwartz. Uh, actor, I think a folk singer too, had the privilege to sing in a choir behind him once as he sang The Night Before Christmas at the Five Crowns Restaurant in Corona Del Mar, California. It was quite an honor. 1917, June Allison, 1943, Oliver North, famous for the Iran-Contra hearings. 1931, Desmond Tutu, Anglican, Anglican Archbishop of South Africa, and 1984, Nobel Peace Prize winner. Speaking of which, the Nobel Peace Prize will be announced this Friday, so that'll be in a couple of days. Uh, it was an honor just to be nominated. 1951, John Mellencamp, formerly known as John Cougar, or John Cougar Mellencamp, singer, songwriter, guitar player. 1952, Vladimir Putin, Russian politician, president and prime minister of Russia, and de facto president of the United States. 1955, Yo-Yo Ma, world-famous cellist. Those of you who are Seinfeld fans will get what I just did. 1964, Dan Savage, American sex columnist and author, and we ran into him once while we were doing our tour. Big fan, Dan, big fan. Moving on to our deaths today. 1849, American writer, poet, and critic Edgar Allan Poe. 1943, Radcliffe Hall, English poet and author. She's best known for The Well of Loneliness, a groundbreaking work in lesbian literature. 1950, Willis Carrier, American engineer, developed modern air conditioning. 1956, Clarence Birdseye, there really was a Clarence Birdseye, American inventor and founder of the modern frozen food industry. 1959, singer Mario Lanza died at the age of 38 of a heart attack. 1991, Leo DeRocher, baseball coach, manager of both the Dodgers and the Giants. 2003, Wally George, American conservative TV commentator. Uh, I don't know if he was well known outside of Orange County in Los Angeles where he was on KDOC. Uh, he was quite the firebrand. Yes, he was. So today our ending quote is uh, just a little bit. We don't have time to read the whole thing, but we thought because of 
today's San Francisco story, we would read a little bit of Allen Ginsberg's Howl, but just a little bit. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked, dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn, looking for an angry fix. Angel-headed hipsters burning for the ancient heavenly connection to the starry dynamo in the machinery of night, who poverty and tatters and hollowed-eyed and high sat up smoking in the supernatural darkness of cold water flats floating across the tops of cities contemplating jazz, who bared their brains to, the, to heaven under the L and saw Mohammedan angels staggering on tenement roofs illuminated, who pass through universities with radiant cool eyes, hallucinating Arkansas and Blake Light tragedy among the scholars of war, who were expelled from the acade academies, hope I pronounced that right, for crazy and publishing obscene odes on the windows of the skull, who cowered in unshaven rooms and underwear, burning their money in wastebaskets, looked, and listening to the terror through the wall, who got busted in their public beards, returning through Laredo with a belt of marijuana from New York for New York, who ate fire in paint hotels or drank turpentine in Paradise Alley, death or purgatoried their torsos night after night. Pick up a copy of Howl at City Lights Booksellers and read the whole thing. So that wraps it up for today's edition. So if you'd like to make a donation, here's the link for that. Uh, you can donate through Patreon, Venmo, PayPal, and we even have a, a monetizing setup now for the podcast via Anchor, so check that out. Um, also, if you'd like to learn more about the tours that uh, the Countess and I did, and we'll be doing again soon, we're hoping to restart around the time that this goes to a weekly vlog and podcast, so there's the information for that. And until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy. If you go outside, wear a mask. You know, we started this in March. We'd probably be back to relatively normal by now if we had actual leadership in this country that required the wearing of masks. We'd be through this pandemic, at least the first wave, as many other nations are. So... Wear your mask. It's such a simple thing. And don't think any of us like wearing them. I certainly don't. But it is necessary not just to protect yourself, but also to protect others around you. Do not be responsible for death and misery. Do not take unproven cures that might kill you unless it is recommended by a doctor. Be kind to one another. And until we see you again, a gracious good day.